Good morning everyone. Hi, hello. My name is EJ and I am back again with another narrated hard time lapse video for us to take a look at and enjoy watching. Hopefully we could learn a thing or two from it. Uh, so yeah, let's just get started on what we're looking at right now. What we're looking at right now is a screen grab from a Minecraft, from an obviously Minecraft world out there. And um, I guess you just quickly talk about where this particular screenshot came from that I'm using as the basis for my illustration. Um, the screenshot is from a Minecraft world done by Westeroscraft. It's King's Landing from Games of Thrones. So for all the Games of Thrones fans out there uh, and for all the Minecraft uh, players out there, who loves kings or who loves games of thrones there's this wonderful uh group out there called westeros craft and basically it's a group of dedicated minecraft players who's basically trying to recreate george r mar r r martin's um world <laughs> westeros in minecraft and so they have all the major seven nations slash seven cities slash all the major capitals of um the world recreated faithfully minecraft is a very very arduous and very amazing project is all i could say i mean took talking about the amount of work that is put in for this particular project it's a lot it's a lot of man hours so i mean kudos to this group of people because they are doing like a really really good job with this particular project so anyways this is actually King's Landing. It's not very obvious because uh, the screenshot that I have is just one of the neighborhoods of King's Landing. So I didn't pick a spot that's pretty popular or was, you know, heavily featured in the TV series. So uh, the main castle, which I forgot what the castle's name is. It's like Red something. I, I forgot. Red Keep. I, I forgot what the main castle's name is. Uh, where the game, where the throne, where the sword throne uh, says, I forgot what that castle is. Anyways, I could have featured that because uh, that is actually in King's Landing as well. I could have, you know, used that as my screen grab and use that as basis of my illustration. But instead, I decided to do this very, very simple, very, very cool looking neighborhood in King's Landing. Um, so, yeah. Um, not only did I pick this particular uh, spot in King's Landing, I also have the one of the shaders pack. Man, I forgot which shader pack this is, but it's one of the more popular ones that you could find out there. I, I was really wanting to take advantage of the whole uh, global illumination thing that some shader packs do. Uh, there's ray tracing available now, especially for NVIDIA. Uh, NVIDIA owners, I don't have that capability yet, uh, so of course I have to rely on shader packs to get this whole wonderful looking ray trace slash global illumination effect going in the photo. It makes Minecraft look uber realistic, <laughs> it looks really really cool, and so I knew that I, I wanted that for this particular project, so yeah. So this is what the basis is of my illustration. Um, as for the idea of where of this whole illustration and what this whole illustration really is all about I, i've been wanting to do a sort of photo study of a minecraft location because i've always just thought that you know I, I know that there's tons and tons of really great minecraft maps out there of great places to just like walk around and explore and, and that's kind of what I like about Minecraft, you know, I mean, it's one of those few video games where you literally can just veg out and do nothing in that video game. So if you've had a tiring day, a very stressful day, and you just want to walk around, look at pretty things, yeah, fire up Minecraft because <laughs> it's very relaxing that way. And and it's really cool though because you know in, in your exploration, exploration, you come up with like certain sites or certain things that you were just like wow this is just really cool to look at just there's just so many minecraft worlds out there it is just so amazing um so i've been wanting to do one you know make an illustration out of it um and so that's 
basically what all the screen grabs are basically but it also coincided with one of uh, the sketch zone activities that I was a part of um, for this particular week so this was done back in 2020 uh, for December 1206 it says it on top of the title I always put the title I always put the date uh, on the title of my files just so that I could order them accordingly um, so I did this way back in the first week of December of 2020 and during that week we had a weekly prompt called traffic I, I can't remember if it's morning traffic or if it was just traffic in general but I figured you know when I saw that prompt and I've been having the desire to do a photo study or slash an art study of a Minecraft scene, I kind of thought that it would be a great way to combine both of those uh, desires slash prompt, you know, and so that's what this whole thing is all about. So basically what we're taking a look at is some form of futuristic scene. It's kind of like one of those scenes where it's like, it's not really known if it's futuristic or if it's, um, if it's back in the day, uh, I mean, obviously one of the things that kind of indicates that this is futuristic is obviously there's floating chairs. We don't have floating chairs in the past or now. So obviously this will have to be the future. But the architecture of the buildings is obviously um, not necessarily back in the day, but it's heavily dependent on back in the day kind of technology. There's a lot more wood, no concrete, no rocks. It's all basically wood in a way is the structure. And that's kind of like what I wanted to give off as a vibe. So I kind of wanted this whole amalgam or like a combination of scene slash genre in my illustration. Um, so yeah. But I think it's a nice concept because basically my idea in this whole scene is like there's this future um, or maybe an alternative universe where, you know, hey, we have floating chairs and that would be just so cool, right? <laughs> and not only would it make things cool if we just have floating chairs, um, it, it would be very, very cool if our cities and villages and any, anywhere where we live basically are it'd be just very cool if all uh our places are more pedestrian traffic or more um geared towards pedestrian traffic you know obviously in our cities right now we are geared towards vehicular traffic you know our our streets are big our streets are huge to accommodate our vehicles um if vehicles are everywhere it's our main way of getting into other places of our metroplex obviously it would be very cool if you just live in a city where it's mainly predominantly pedestrian based where everything that we go to we could either walk or fly towards to if we you know so keen and I, I just think that that would be just a really really cool place to live at you know um where it's there's no need for like heavy bulky cars it would be just this flying chairs and it would be much safer obviously um and everyone kind of walks in a leisurely pace so that's kind of like the idea i have in my mind when i decided to do this illustration a i wanted the whole minecraft photo study thing which i'm already doing and then i got the prompt of traffic right and so i kind of wanted to combine those two scenarios i know minecraft is perfect because especially king's landing right king's landing the way it was designed is that obviously in king's landing there's no cars there's no vehicles i mean it's a fantasy world set back in the time or whatever where there's no such futuristic things or no modern conveniences such as those things and so obviously the whole setting of westeros does not accommodate those kind of vehicles you know everything is basically just pedestrian traffic and so this is what this scene is right in from in this neighborhood that i picked from king's landing and so i wanted to combine those both because the you know the prompt was traffic and i was like well i it'd be cool if you live in this world where you know everything is geared towards pedestrian traffic more than our vehicular traffic get it out all that stuff and so yeah that's where the idea came from <laughs> really cool Personally, I think that I was able to combine those two 
thoughts in my head into this one illustration and that I'm really, really glad that I was able to find this particular piece um, slash particular neighborhood in King's Landing to make an illustration out of. So yeah, I thought that was very, very cool. So, but anyways, now that I had fully explained where my idea was coming from and whatnot, let's talk real quick about what happened in the past 10 minutes. What happened in the past 10 minutes is obviously I took my screenshot of this particular neighborhood. I did a quick sketch on top of it to kind of just denote where things are, especially where the characters are going to be, where the traffic is going to be, where the people are going to be. And then a real quick sketch of that and then on top of that i did a far more detailed sketch of all the expressions of the people and their uh, gestures and their poses and whatnot so i did those um i did a more uh, definitive sketch of those and then obviously a sketch the houses basically i just trace over the houses because obviously minecraft pretty much did all the job already um and then as soon as i have those i added some more colors just to kind of you know refine slash define the shapes of the characters i mean you can see that i obviously have a different coloring for the characters versus the one in the background the houses in the background the houses in the background pretty much just depends on the colors that i got from the actual screenshot itself so and i edited the sky i added a little bit more color in the sky versus the one that was originally from the screenshot and then as soon as i got all this down uh in different layers and combine all those layers into one layer and then i start smudging things around um this is what i typically do i smudge everything after I do like all my heavy initial edits and all my laying the groundwork, my ideas, my lighting, my outlines, after laying all those down very, very quickly, um, I would smudge everything into recognizable shapes. And then as soon as I get what I call a base paint, this one layer where I have this, basically, this is what I would call my base paint. Um, this is in one layer. Um, everything's smudged so everything's kind of fuzzy but everything is kind of recognizable I can tell where the houses are I can tell where the characters are and whatnot as soon as I get this one layer I just basically start detailing on top of this and so my detailing really becomes easy at this point because everything else is already down on this one layer the lighting information the shadow information obviously the shape information is already there so I just basically just needed to define it and so I do this by doing a three-step process over and over again in all my areas of the illustration. So the three-step process is basically I delineate my edges, which means I make my edges sharper so that my shapes read clearer. I accentuate the shadows. So if the shadows need a little bit more darkening, I just darken them a bit more. And then I add highlights. Um, so yeah, I'll be doing that all throughout the scene to slowly define this whole piece and that's what we're going to be watching in the next few minutes so just enjoy the show for now i will talk some more about this piece later on but for now we'll just watch and enjoy
perfect. So at this point in time, um, I am starting to basically detail the foreground characters, which really, even though they're kind of minuscule and kind of a small part of the illustration uh, in terms of space wise, um, obviously when you take a look at the illustration, the very, very first thing you really do notice is that middle building in, well, the middle <laughs> because it's 
it, it just takes up a lot of space uh, in, in all the illustrations. So really, the the most iconic thing that you do first recognize out of this whole scene is obviously the buildings it's just a really really cool architecture <laughs> this really really cool scene from again king's landing done by west Terrace craft uh, a bunch of minecraft players as faithfully recreating george R. R. martin's world it's so amazing i mean i can't <laughs> i can't stop gushing over this because it's just really cool but what i'm trying to get at though is that um, the buildings versus the characters the buildings kind of do take precedence it kind of does take your attention more than the characters but honestly for personally for me the characters are the ones that i was kind of more emotionally invested in um i, I love doing sceneries and i love doing landscapes but i could just n i just could not be someone like um like most landscape artists I, I can't be like the hudson river artist for example um i can't be albert Bierstadt, for example simply just because all those artists when they do their landscapes they always just focus on the uh, well typically landscapes typically denote just nature they don't really typically denote man-made um scenes but it can uh but typically landscape artwork means that there's no people in it i just i don't like it <laughs> i just i love my landscapes with people in it because personally i feel like that's what makes it much much more interesting um and whatnot i mean uh, as much as the hudson river artists are really cool and really awesome for doing all this wonderful nature paintings back in the day um and there's this other photographer that i f forgot his name he's very big on landscape uh let me see if I can find his name uh, real quick. But he was back in the 20s. Uh, everyone knows him. Um, Ansel Adams. Or, yeah. Uh, I can't be Ansel Adams, for example. Just because with Ansel Adams, I mean, he doesn't have any people in any of his photography. It's always just the landscape. And it's gorgeous. Don't get me wrong. They're very, very gorgeous. But I personally feel like in any photographs or in any landscape sceneries, it's really people that kind of makes it for me. And so for this particular scene, you know... I, I like I mentioned I wanted to do a study of like a Minecraft world which is I am which is what I did sorry which is what I'm doing obviously as we're watching this and it's really cool that I got to do that but what I really think is really interesting about this illustration is again the people in the scene I've already talked about like a society where it's more pedestrian based traffic rather than vehicular based traffic I think that would be cool to live in I think it would be very cool if we have floating chairs such as the ones I depicted on the scene like that would make transportation immensely immensely practical um, because then we don't have to have like a huge space for cars and whatnot it'd be just small pedestrian traffic again like back in the day and i just think it would be just cool in general i think it'd be safer um and from the looks of it this feels far more energy efficient i'm assuming if you are an advanced enough society great floating chairs i'm sure you could be very very energy efficient but i think it would be very cool but anyways yeah so i started detailing all the people and i think they're really the most interesting part of this illustration their expressions and and just the way i drew them i mean obviously this is a speed paint so i didn't detail them as much if i was to detail them a whole lot of course it would get livelier and there'd be more expressiveness to their characters um but obviously i really wanted this to be a speed paint which technically i went over my five hour limit that is my number of hours that I typically spend in any given speed paint I try to limit it to five hours anything above that I just don't consider a, a speed paint anymore and for this particular one I did this for five hours and two minutes so I was like two minutes over my deadline but um either way it still works you know uh I got to finish everything and oh look at that cute boy with his happy face I just did that and this is what I'm talking about obviously I drew him very very simplistic because i knew the time was running out and i just really just wanted to finish this piece so yeah it looked very very simple but if this is 
really more detailed if i pick this piece up again to develop some more i guarantee you this would look so so cool so so cool i especially love those two girls on those floating chairs like they're leaning towards each other like hey did you hear the latest gossip and so and so blah 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 like i just think that my characterization of them is just really cool and the grandpa towards the left i, I love how he's just like do 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 yo what's up thing <laughs> with him in his glasses so i, I just I just think that the way that these characters are just really, really cool. So yeah, but honestly, I think that's what makes this whole illustration interesting. As much as you know, Asteris Craft is really, really awesome, and what these guys are doing are just wow. <laughs> you know, um, the characters are created really just yeah, way cool. So, but I really got it got to do this illustration uh, and i got the chance to do it with the prompt morning traffic um so yeah i'm just really glad that i got to combine those two ideas slash prompts together to create this very very wonderful looking illustration so yeah and here i am adding my final touches i'm adding some color dodge to kind of indicate uh more likeness to the scene so yeah, there it is, pretty much done. I know I did some light tweaks, some color edits towards the end, and yeah, there it is. Thank you guys for watching this with me. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you learned a thing or two from it. I hope you like my idea of a pedestrian-based society, because I really think that would be very cool. And I think it would be very cool if we have floating chairs, so. <laughs> Thank you guys, like and subscribe, I'll see you guys in the next video, good night.